35 years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, live from Harlem, it's The Ramble with me, I'm Alex Bennett, and we will be here until midnight tonight. And uh, good evening to all of you, uh, and uh, I don't have any uh, guests tonight, I didn't record anybody, uh, because I'm, I'm kind of going light on doing the interviews in advance, because I don't know how much time I'm going to be taking off next week. I may be taking off one day. I may be taking off the whole week. We don't know how I'm going to feel at the time because I'm having a procedure. Is that the best way of putting it? Yeah, a procedure. Uh, anyway, uh, what we thought we would do, we rely on this. We have a lot of uh, Will Durst interviews that we did over the years. And as you know, Will uh, is, uh, is, is not well right now. He is uh, down with the, uh, with the stroke, actually. Uh, but he's getting better, and according to his wife, uh, uh, um, Debbie, uh, he is uh, he, he's starting to move limbs, and he's starting to speak better, and so on and so forth. And I told him, well, for good therapy, just stick a microphone in front of his mouth, you know. But anyway, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. But in the meantime, we have all these interviews we did with him, and I like to run them every now and then because, gee, he is so smart, and he is so funny, and he is so good, and he sounds something like this. Ladies, oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, there's our guest for tonight. Which one is that? Eloise? Heloise? Eloise, very oh, good. Eloise, I'm getting good at uh, recognizing your cat. My cats, yes. Yeah, yeah. She just wants to keep her tail in the picture, that's all. And the t they have more tail. <laughs> they always know when something's, uh, you know, facing them, right? You know, when the camera's on. She yeah. does know when the camera's on. Yeah. How you doing today, Will Durst? I'm good. How's it going, Alex Bennett? Uh, I've been going through a little uh, sicky thing. It, I think it's a, a. I went to the doctor. He thinks it's a pollen. Pollen? Yeah, it's like affecting my throat, and you know, I have a little oh. slight feel like I have to cough, and right. you know, keep my, the windows closed. I, I I can't do that. You know why? Because my wife, God bless her soul, has this whole deal where she doesn't want to do that. You know. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. I, I uh, you know, I've, I've got. She likes to have the windows open. And I've been told if it's pollen season and you want to keep the pollen out, keep the windows fucking closed. But she that that that, that yeah, yeah yeah. So she doesn't care if I'm wheezing, if I'm dizzy, if I'm if I've got all this stuff. Like I went to the doctor. I. Uh, Went to the doctor yesterday. Uh, I went to one of these clinics, you know, one of these walk-in places the other day, uh -huh. and he tested me out, and he, he checked my heart, did an EKG, and found that there was an, something wrong with it. Well, there always is something wrong with my EKG because I have a, a bundle or something. that I have a slight some murmur. Sort of, I was, some sort of arrhythmia? A, no, arrhythmia? It, no, no, it's, it's a heart murmur, okay? It's okay. a... Uh, Steno aortic stenosis but so i went to my my other doctor yesterday and um, he's a cardiologist and he gave me an echocardiogram and said hey your, you know your aorta is a little more clogged but not you know he says if it keeps going at this rate you'll be dead of something else before and i said do you have to say that do you have to say i'll be dead he said i know it's a little morbid but you're not going to die from this aortic stenosis so he said, I can't find anything wrong with you, so it's probably the allergies. It's probably the pollen. Because supposedly pollen is just running rampant this year. Just horrible. Do you have air conditioning? Yes. I don't care unless I have the air conditioner on all the time, which isn't necessary. She wants the window open. I well... Uh, I, I'm going to have an answer. I think a divorce. Is, an I, I think a divorce so. is the answer. 
you know. Yes, of course there's an obvious answer to all of this. At least it will minimize it, you know. But the pollen just keeps wafting into the house, you know. So Can you make her a deal, like a week on and a week off? Uh, no, no. It, 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 in this house, it's her way or the highway. Hey. I, you know, everything has to be done just right. The bed has to be made in a certain way. You know, I mean, quite frankly, when I wasn't married, I never made the bed. <laughs> you know, I would straighten it. I would straighten it a little bit. If and if it, uh, if I got too much food on the sheets, I'd change them. You and Marilyn Monroe, apparently. Well, I used to, I used to eat on the bed. I used to literally. I had a. Uh, this was in New York. I had a, a tarp. I would throw down on top of the bed, and we'd sit there and eat on the bed. <clears throat> I didn't have a dining room table. And then you would hose the top tarp off. If it got bad, we'd hose the tarp off. Yeah, and then you know. And plus, it was it was it was uh, convenient because usually I was having dinner with a date, and uh, you know there was very little places we had to go after dinner, but right under the sheets. So you know it was really cut down to the commute. When they came over, I would make the bed. Uh, yeah. yeah. And the tarp. And the and the and and I'd wash the tarp in there on. Yeah. If my wife is listening right now, she's probably going apoplectic okay <laughs> because uh, uh uh the whole idea of eating in bed that's another thing of her don't eat in bed you're gonna get crumbs in the bed i don't yeah. care i'll vacuum the bed that's what i used to do <laughs> you know when's the last time you ever vacuumed the bed vacuum well, the we bed have, we have popcorn in bed and i'm always ha i always have to get out the towel and wipe the salt out of the bed well we have one of those hand vacs you know yeah 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 that used to do it for me never had this problem with other wives just this one <laughs> you know and of course yeah, they get set in their ways down the line also you know what's interesting is i had asthma as a kid and it seems like it's back again actually somewhat not not actual asthma, but the you know being allergic to stuff. Uh, for a while, when I uh, when I moved to New York years ago, I lost all those allergies, and then when I went back to California, I didn't seem to have them. Oh. And then I came back to New York, and now I seem to be getting these allergies again. So oh. you know what the hell? A B B A. Yeah. So much about my health. How's your health? Uh, knock on wood. Not good for Micah. Everything's good so far. Yeah. Uh, I get tired faster, but... Uh, I'm tired all the time. What do you mean? I, I could always, as long as I can do in nine, stand up and do a 90-minute show, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. But if I know I'm going to do a show that night... Yeah, you have to get a nap. I can't go to the museum during the day. Oh, I see. Okay. You can't do anything that takes energy. I, I, museums are are what lose out. Well, you're yeah. you're how old now? You're nine, uh, 95, something like that. What? How old something are you? Like that. Yeah, 95 minus 20, 28. You're too, <laughs> no, you're you're 65 or something like that. Around 67, there. yeah. 67. And you're 70. Yeah, I'm 79. So you can only imagine how tired. I, older than I you am, can imagine yeah. how tired I get. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Do you take a nap every day. No, but then I do the show at night, and I do coffee, and about an hour in, it used to be, I could do the two hours standing on my head, and now a half, with an hour in, I'm, I'm starting to get dr drowsy, so, you know. Hey, but you can sleep at night after drinking coffee? Uh, yeah, because I get drowsy. <laughs> no, sometimes I have to take something like a Xanax or a... Uh, 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 it, uh, lately, I've decided I'll take Benadryl. That that puts me to sleep, you know. No idea what any of those are. Uh, Benadryl is the decongestant uh, antihistamine. Oh, and the, oh, and antihistamines are good because they're not going to kill you. You could, you know, you just maybe you just dry up and turn into powder. I don't know, you know. Never oh, figured. dry up. Yeah, dry up. Yeah. So anyway, so how's how's business? Uh, you, he's a comic and he does. Uh, Comedy stuff. I do the uh, the yeah. funny comedy humor thing, yeah. and uh, get a gig. Uh, had a gig on Sunday and Father's Day. Not mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote all this new material 
and I want to unveil it at the punchline. I'm going to be at the punchline a week from tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, I'm busy rehearsing it, and I go off, and uh, and I this this is my new set. Right here. Yeah. And it's only four pages. And I got most of it out on Sunday. And th- uh, I got a gig Thursday and Friday. So hopefully I can. Yeah. Well, so well, that's, it com- that's every, the hard part. Every it's comedian, it's, it's interesting. Every comedian works differently. You write it all out, right? Yeah. I need a script. You have a script. Uh, other comedians have the jokes. <laughs> they know what they are. And then they just go up and start doing the act. Um, there, there are some who never write them down. No, you know, um, those guys have funny bones. I don't have funny well, bones. I don't I'm know. a I mean, writer who performs. Slayton has funny bones, but I've seen him with his notes. You know, he uh, I, I, because I think it has something to do. Doesn't it have something to do with remembering the joke too. That if you just made it up and said, "I'll put that in the act," and you didn't write it down, you'd forget it. Everybody's different, as you say. I I am very dependent on uh, the words. Yeah. Well, your your whole f- whole show is precise about words and the order in which they come, and so on and so forth. Yeah. 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 So you work on the punchline. The punchline's closing down, right? Man, it's such a, uh, a mish. Uh, yeah, we don't. We have no idea what uh, uh, because we've heard different things first. We heard that the landlord, which is Morgan Stanley, mm-hmm. owns the building. The landlord was going to sell that building and the building next to it, which used to be the old Waldorf, going to sell that and the Alcoa building, which is across the, that the whole thing was going to be sold to Google. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. uh, we had this huge NATO Green put together uh, a protest and city steps and Aaron Peskin and Dave Chappelle came down to give it some publicity. Mm-hmm. And then Google was reached by one of the TV stations and said, we are looking forward to having the punchline as our neighbor. So then it kind of seemed that Morgan Stanley was using Google as a Judas goat so that they didn't have to take the weight, and because everybody in town here is so used to blaming Google for everything, right? You know, just fit another thing, and and so then Google because the rumor uh, said the no, rumor, it's not the, us. The rumor and running Morgan Stanley uh, shut up, won't talk to anybody, and punchline still. And Aaron Peskin put through uh, a temporary zoning restriction so that space of the punchline can only be used for entertainment. Wow. So we have no idea what Morgan Stanley or Google, we have no idea. I'll yeah. find out next week. Well, the rumor running around was that Google wanted to turn it into a gym for their uh, for their people. You heard that one, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So it may not it may not close down then. And, uh, we don't know. And the, in case we're talking people, about the it, let's, beginning of August or the end of August. Yeah. All I know is August was mentioned. Let's tell people about the punchline. It's a club that's been there for how many years now? Since I think before, 1978. I think 41. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, 41 years. 1978. I got yeah. to San Francisco in uh, late 79. Came back to San Francisco. Late 79. So it was in operation when I was there. You know, so uh, and, uh, and it's the perfect size. You know, it's, it's a perfect 140, club. I think, after the fire restrictions. It used to be 160, 180, but they had to take the seats along that one wall there by the front door. Yeah, because uh, the fire marshals came it's, in. It's perfect but because it's, the floor yeah. is parquet, and the walls are all brick, real brick, not yeah. phony brick, but real brick. Yeah. And then they got this beautiful mural in front. But the laughs bounce off that parquet and off the brick. And the audiences think they're having a much better time than they actually are. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah when you, when you talk was, about, about brick walls, uh, comedy clubs, by law, have to have a brick wall. No, it uh, works out acoustically. No, no. But what I'm, here's what I'm saying. 
it seems as though every club, even if it isn't a real brick wall, has a phony brick wall. Yeah, yeah, it does. Clubs. In fact... And there was a reason for it. And then they started putting up these plastic replicas. Well, no, here's balls. what happened. In, used, in uh, Florida, when I was down in Florida, there was this comedy promoter who did comedy at various venues around town during the week. And he literally had a portable brick wall that went to each of the clubs. So here we are in front of our brick wall doing comedy. Yeah, it became a signifier. I think, like, uh, I, I think that was the, uh, who was it? Uh, 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 what's the club? The big club that was in New York and then went to L.A. Catch Rising Star? Huh? No, the other one. Uh, improv? Improv. I think because the improv on A&E did their shows, and there was a brick wall there. Everybody felt they had to have a brick wall. That's well, my, I think that's the my brick theory. wall started earlier, yeah. Yeah. Than the improv, yeah. But anyway, the, the punchline is a is a very perfect, intimate club. Yeah, it's a civic jewel. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it's it's continued to make money. It's not going broke, right? I don't know. All I know is I make uh, the same amount of money headlining as I did my first week there of headlining, which was nineteen eighty. When did I win the comedy competition? 83, 84. I don't Anyhow, know. Anyhow, I got a headlining week after I won the comedy competition. And I'm, I'm making, so 34 years later, I'm still making the same money. Well, they're probably, technically, they're paying less. Oh, yeah, because the door, you know, went up from 10 bucks, if it was 10 bucks, and now it's like 25 yeah, but, you know, most of those clubs don't actually charge at the door because they have these twofers they hand right. out around town so that people c come into the club. It's like, you know, you get uh, two two tickets, come on in for free. Now here are the drinks. They're 40 bucks a piece. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And Gold Star and Groupon and, yeah. Yeah. Marketing so, is totally different. Yeah. Today. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, it, it, it would be sad if the punchline went away only because <coughs> it, it just represents something. It, it, yeah, and know. they've had an open mic every Sunday since 1979. Every Sunday And open night mics, folks, are important, are important because that's where new comics go in yeah. and can learn how to be a comic, actually. You know, have an audience that tells them you're not funny yet, you know. And then one night you go in and you get some laughs and you go, I'm finally funny. Yeah, it used to be when I got here, you were an open micer. Yeah. You were uh, uh, an, op an MC. Mm -hmm. Then you were a middle act. Then you were a headliner. Then you moved to L.A. And that was the natural progression, which usually took two, two and a half years to yeah. get through from initially starting out in the city. Yeah, but you, 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 San Francisco yeah. was a way station. It wasn't a destination. You, you know what the problem uh, to me always was with that hierarchy was that some people were able to jump it. And here's how they did it. If you were a certain kind of act, nobody wanted to follow you. Nobody wanted to follow uh, an act with props. Bobcat. Yeah. Nobody wanted to follow somebody who screams. Okay. Uh, and so consequently, like something like Bob Goldthwait, he went straight to headliner. You know, where if he wasn't a screamer, he probably would have had to work his way up. Yeah, but he also came kind of fully formed from Boston. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like he had, you know, I came from Milwaukee. I wasn't getting the same kind of uh, no uh, repetition on stage that other people were getting in other cities. Chicago, you could get up every day, yeah. every night. Boston, you could get up every night. You know, I still don't understand why he went to San Francisco instead of New York. Who? Bobcat. Bobcat. Uh, I don't think New York, oddly enough, wasn't a jumping off point. It wasn't a point at which you could build a reputation. It's where you went once you had one. You know, it's, I the think two you're right, cities, yeah. the two cities that were engendering. The, that embracing that kind of growth that you have to have in order to be a, a, a comic were Boston, which was a hotbed of comedy and so on. Especially if you were a white male. G gave us the likes of Bobcat and Ke Kevin Meany, and I'm trying to remember all the other people. Dana Gould. Dana Gould. Uh, all of Poundstone. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, um, 
then you would, you know, San Francisco was the other city that was good this way. So if you were in Boston and you wanted to go somewhere else, you came to San Francisco. You didn't go to L.A. L.A. was where you went after you made it in San Francisco. Yeah. You know, and the only reason you went to L.A. is you wanted to be seen on stage so that maybe some TV network would see you and give you a sitcom and then you never have to go on stage again. <laughs> really, that's what it's all about. It is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, and and people who did not like stand up, they just used it as a as a conveyor belt to the big time. The biggest yeah. road warrior I know, which is Bobby Slayton, okay, who's out on the road a lot, okay, and through his life has probably logged up more air miles than anybody I know, okay. Uh, he went to L.A. and uh, he would have been very happy to get a sitcom, and not have to go and do his act anymore. You know, it's just that way. Now, the only guy I know who hated doing a sitcom and was happy when it was over and went back to doing comedy in clubs and on stages across the country is Seinfeld. And you can't think of a more successful guy in television. No. You know, but he didn't like it. He didn't like the pressure. He didn't, you know, he talks about it all the time that he was, when it was over, he was happy, you know. He was also about a half a billion dollars richer, but he was happy. I don't know. I just saw what, hap I what saw happens when you get to be that rich. Uh, a lot of different pressures. Well, you can say fuck you to a lot of people. That's true. <laughs> you know. True. Uh, the, the thing was, I saw a documentary on the last uh, on the how Seinfeld came to be and all the stuff they had to go through. Uh, and and Dave, uh, they tell about Larry David, and Larry David on the documentary admits to it that he didn't want to work that show. He thought he would do the pilot, and that would be it. It would fail, and then he could go back to whatever he was doing. You know, he didn't want to have to do that um, that whole thing. Uh, it says here I'm getting a poor connection. Well, you're coming through okay. Anyway, uh, 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 that he didn't want it. He didn't want it. And they finally, they, they said to him, well, look, we're going to do four more. Come back and do it. And we'll make you an executive producer. <laughs> they threw him executive producer. And now he's, of course, worth, you know, a quarter of a billion dollars. He only has, he doesn't have a half a billion dollars because his wife took half of it, you know. <laughs> uh, but the fact of the matter is, if, if Larry David had had his way, he never <laughs> would have had that success. You know. No, it, the show would not have been a success. Well, it, it took the two. They needed all those voices in there to keep that show. Yeah. Uh, to be so unique, you know. Well, it took the it took the two of them. Uh, in, in, in they just said they were a perfect confluence of of uh, energy, you know, and that what they're they're and they stood by their idea of what the show should be. You know, not that it was a show about nothing, but that it, it just was not about what other sitcoms are about. You know, there wasn't the white No, it was it. about minor irritations and and stuff that, that, you know, a whole day can turn around and everywhere that we've been. And, you know, you, we've, you, you we've to, all, yeah. You, you go to a Chinese restaurant, that's an episode, yeah. you know. Uh, and, and they still... And they didn't have to have a moral at the end. It, well, yeah. They stood true to their vision, and their vision worked, you know. And, and in the last episode, everybody goes to jail. It, yeah, and I don't think anybody's ever done that kind of show since. I think that was uh, one of a kind. Uh, they've tried to do things like it. You know, I always considered Friends the poor man Seinfeld, but it never was. It was Friends. It was a bunch of friends that hung out. So was Seinfeld, but the difference was some of them were likable on Friends. On Seinfeld, there wasn't one person there who wasn't selfish and self-absorbed. Well, yeah. you were talking about uh, a comedian and his circle of friends, you know. Yeah. So there's they're smart, and I I never knew what Friends was about. Uh, it was about trying Except to. Except they had a great apartment. Yeah, I never watched the show. I watched one episode or tried to watch one episode and I went, eh, this is a poor man Seinfeld, you know? And I, so I, I, I had no great love for it. 
I don't watch a lot of sitcoms because I feel betrayed by the laugh track. It's like them telling you when to laugh, and I hardly well, ever agree with their I, choices. I, this is something I argue or, with girlfriend about. Or their vociferous. This is something I argue with girlfriend about. She says she doesn't like laugh tracks. And I said, well, you know, I said, you should, you should watch Big Bang Theory. And she says, well, I don't like laugh tracks. And I said, that isn't a laugh track. There's an actual live studio audience because they feel, and uh, uh, Chuck Glory always felt, that having a live audience, and not all the shows have a live audience now, but uh, having a live audience keeps your comedy honest. You know when it's funny when there's an audience. You don't know when it's funny when you've written it and somebody does it and you say, good performance, we hope people laugh at that. <coughs> you know. So yeah, I don't... I, don't, I, I still I, don't like the... The studio laughs. That, if even if it's not a laugh track, I don't like. I just don't like it. It makes me crawl. Yeah. Because I I've spent a lot of time trying to a lot of time trying to elicit actual laughter, and I know the difference. Yeah. Well, I just don't like it when it's uh, when it's pre-recorded laughter. You know, in the old days, if somebody would tell a joke, "Hi, Bob." Hey, look, there's Bob, and everybody would, ha, 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 ha. and you go, "Where did that come from?" You know, and it was the same laugh. <laughs> track they did 10 minutes earlier you know yeah from i love lucy yeah, yeah. but so so it, it um you know but when it's when it, when there's a live audience there i say okay you know i'll i'll allow that i don't watch a lot of sitcoms Although Lori, what, are, what are you watching these days you know what i just finished i finished on netflix designated survivor oh really yeah with keeper yeah uh i like the original show but it wasn't that great the new one I think is better than anything on Netflix is better than anything they ever did on the network. Oh, wow. To begin with, they take advantage of the fact that they can say four dirty language. Words. Well, let me say this, and I'm not spoiling it because I'm not telling you why. The very last word that Kiefer Sutherland says after the ten episodes is shit. <laughs> Uh, it, so it's a ten episode. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and it's it's really political, and what they've interspersed it with are real people talking to the camera about what they think is wrong with the country, made by documentary filmmakers, and oh they're like sitting there and say, "Look at this. This is on uh, this is on YouTube," and then they'll play some clips, and those clips are all legitimate, real people that they went out and filmed. So I kind of like the show. I think it's it really is a vast improvement over what they were doing on ABC. Did you watch the first two seasons on ABC? Yes, I did. I felt the second season so-so. First season, I liked the premise. Yeah. Now the premise, you know, since you can't go with that premise that the guy, in case people don't remember, what happened was he, every time the, the Congress was meeting for the State of the Union address, the president... Uh, they would have one person who was a designated survivor in case something happened to the entire a member con- of the cabinet. Right, member of the cabinet, and he's like, I don't know, I can't remember. Secretary of Housing and Urban S- Development, something like yeah. that. Yeah, and uh, they, they blow up the Capitol, and he's the only one left alive, so he's the designated survivor. Well, that worked for a couple of seasons, but what do you do now? What they did came back with was, it's now time for him to run for president. He's never been elected president, and he's not the kind of guy who knows how to run for president and all the things that come into play and his his desire for honesty and uh, the consultant who says no you got to do this rather than this and it really i think is a pretty good uh, pretty good show this year did well, they we- find out did they punish uh, the people who were responsible for the plot i think that was in year two they found yeah. those people yeah yeah Okay. But th- this one, uh, you know, it's pretty. I think it's pretty good, and politically, I love it because you know, one episode they had, for instance, I just got finished watching, was about uh, a, uh, a immigrant kid who the parents came over the border because he had to get a kidney transplant and needed dialysis, and they want to throw him out of the country because they came in illegally, and if they do, the kid will die. You know, so those kind of things, you know, yeah. and it's like. Uh, they kind of slam it. It, it, it. Let's face it, Kiefer Sutherland always was the anti-Trump. You know, he was the president we all wish we had. Yeah. So. Hey, listen. 
We've gone well over our allotted time, and we didn't. Oh, no, no, no. I, and I, I, I have so much more to say. Oh, well, go ahead. To opine. Go ahead. Go ahead. We, did, we mentioned Trump once, and that was just now when I was talking about Kiefer Sutherland's character yeah, being I'm the so tired of him. anti Trump. Yeah, I'm so tired of him. I, yeah. you know, and yeah. I think the whole country is. You know, I, can I say this? We, got, we can go over a little bit here. Fuck him. I, I don't need. I can let you run long. Uh, I'm beginning to believe Buttigieg is the best choice. Buttigieg. And, and, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I feel it's, it, it, it's it, he's the right choice. Is because um, I think if he were out there making his case, he could win. Uh, you know, and uh, I've listened to him, and he's smart, and he has ideas, and he can talk foreign policy, he can talk domestic policy. I think he could run rings around Trump if he ran. And in the latest polls, he's beating Trump. Yeah, yeah. So everybody does. Uh, and he hasn't well, even five five R. He hasn't five. even gotten his full. Biden, Bernie, Bernie booty, booty gig, uh, yeah. Harris, and uh, uh, Elizabeth else. Warren. Elizabeth Warren. They're yeah. all beating Trump. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're all beating Trump. So we'll see. I'll, I'll be honest. I'd be okay with any of them except Bernie. I don't like Bernie. I don't like Bernie either. I know we're, we're, we're going to be hated for that. People are going, yeah. hey, how can you hate Bernie? We love Bernie. What do you mean you yeah. love Bernie? I know people who know Bernie in Vermont and hate him. You know, and they're liberals. He's got the <laughs> sense of humor of an end table. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, you know, I don't think, I don't really think he could win against Trump. I really don't. <laughs> but Buttigieg, I, I, I like him. I just like him. And I don't think the gay factor is going to be a problem. And he's young. And he's young, and, and he's got ideas, and he, he feel he'd go in running, you know, as opposed to crawling or waddling as Trump does, you know, so whatever, you know. But uh, Trump, uh, who knows? He's all for the Russians helping him, so we, <laughs> we don't know. And then the next day he said he didn't say that. Uh, yeah, even though it's on tape. Yeah, it's yeah, on tape. Yeah. Hey, insisting that what he's saying is true. And then the next day he said he didn't say that. And then he doesn't believe the polls. Well, he the polls that came back from his internal polling said the same thing that the Fox News polls said about these other people being able to beat him. And, and that, so And then he fired his pollsters. He fired the pollsters. You know, that's uh, killing the messenger. Okay. <laughs> what the hell? Hey, listen. It's always great to talk to you. Say hello to your lovely wife. I'll talk to you in three uh, weeks. Uh, and why don't you write her a nice note and tell her to close the windows? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Will fucking Durst. That's me. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, there we go. Will Durst, uh, oldie but goodie. We like to run him every now and then, especially when we have nobody else to put him in this spot. I've been thinking about a, a few changes here. I was thinking there's nobody that goes on before me like used to with uh, the exchange. Maybe I could just start going on at 1030 and not have to run an interview every night. Uh, that's possible. Yep, that's possible. Something, something to think about, folks. Something to think about. Anyway, let me open up the uh, Skype line, see if anybody wants to call this here programmy. Uh, this will be my last night uh, for a couple of days at least. Um, I'm not going to be on Tuesday night. That's for damn sure. I'm having this whole procedure going on, the seed implantation, the radioactive seed implantation, and uh, it's going to go on. Uh, um, uh, on on Tuesday, and I don't think I'm going to feel much like doing a show on Tuesday night. Okay, to be very honest with you, uh, I might be able to do on Wednesday. I don't know, but if need be, I'm going to take. I'll take the rest of the week off. I'll take as much time as it needs for me to feel rested and uh, ready to do a program and feel that physically I can sit here for a couple of hours. And we might go to that hour and a half format at least for that time. In order to um, 
in order to compensate for everything and, and get, you know, whatever. So anyway, I won't be here Tuesday night, okay? So don't even plan on it. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I, I can't see a way. They said that they might do the operation at like 8 o'clock in the morning, which even if I feel great that night, I'm going to be too tired <laughs> to, to do it. So anyway, they say that uh, the next day you're ready to go back to work and play golf, as they say in their little brochure and whatever, you know. So anyway, so our lines are open. I'm waiting for somebody to call here, but maybe nobody's going to call tonight. That would be nice, and I can just say uh, uh, to hell with it and turn around and go to, you know, go to, uh, go to sleep. Or do something else. Uh, here, well, here comes Phil Meyer ruining my desire to get some sleep. Let's see here. Uh, he's already there from last night, so you can see right there. See that down down there. I meant down there. Hey, Alex, I uh, yeah, yeah. did see the green light. I when you said the lines were open, I just clicked on it. Really? Yeah. Hmm, let me see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. It's working, I guess. Uh, yeah, you know, it is working. Light. Um, about Skype, I don't know. I, I, it looks like it's on, so I don't know. I don't know what the story is. Okay, well, we, we you can call us anyway, even though there may not be a green light. I turned the green light on, but now there's no way for me to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, wait a minute, maybe I can. Hold on a second. Ah, there we go. I'm finding right. a way here to see if uh, the... Oh, you're right. It's not active. I put it up there. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's active now. Yeah. Well, if they're listening, they'll call. And if they if they don't call, then to hell with them. It would just be right. you and me. Yeah. And I'll just shut up, and you can spend the rest of the night telling everybody what a wonderful guy uh, Trump is. Yeah. Trump is. Yeah. All right. Uh, am I, am I, is my picture too bright tonight? A little bit. A little bit? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I, I watch what happens, folks. This is really fun. Turn the light down a little. When I well, no, it doesn't matter of turning the light down. It's mm -hmm. a matter of turning the uh, camera settings down. What happens? And watch. You, I'll go. I'll go like just uh, 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 when this thing pops in. Um, if it does, if it ever pops in, there we go. See how I, I'm suddenly. Uh, uh, well, first of all, I have to do Watch this. Life. What? What? You were larger than no, life. No, 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 no. Just, just hold on. Just hold on. First of all, I got to take care of your camera, the one you see. Okay. All right. And then I have to uh, go uh, take that off of autofocus. And then I go to the other, and watch what happens, folks. When I, when I, when I play with this, uh, I go here, and I go here, and boom. See how I'm square now? Yeah. But we get rid of that very easily by going up here oh, yeah. and then going wide screen, and boom, there we go. And then I go over here. See, I remember I, I, I had to reboot this thing, and I never rechanged the settings. And so, therefore, I was ultimately very bright. So now we're not bright anymore, and uh, we're cool. Okay. Uh, is, looks pretty is good. Your camera uh, uh, functions uh, part of OBS, or do you actually well, have? Well, uh, it's funny. It's funny. It is part of OBS on Windows, hmm. but it is not part of OBS on uh, the Mac. Hmm. I have to use the old uh, settings that uh, um, uh, that Logitech has here, the camera thing, uh, yeah. in order to do it. But it would be nice if they did. You know. I don't know why they can do it for the OBS on Windows, but they can't do it for the OBS. OBS is the thing we use that, uh, you know, does this sort of stuff. Say, changes the pictures and makes everybody come in and out, and that that's OBS, uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a broadcast uh, switcher is the best way to describe it. Here we go. Uh, Josh Wheeler is uh, arriving and on 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 set. Uh, let's see here. Let me see here. Let me go here. Oh, wait a minute. First, I have to wait for you. Yeah, let me go. Tur turn your camera on. There we go. All righty. Now, wait a minute. We've got to get Josh Wheeler. Josh W. He's got to be. There he is. Okay. And boom. There he is. Hello, Josh. How are you? 
Good, how are you? I'm okay. I'm surviving. You know, getting ready for the big operation. Big well, operation. Today's the day, huh? 30, 30 minutes. What? Tuesday is the day. Tuesday is the day, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And this is just a one day procedure they don't it's not like five times like the other oh thing. no it's no this is this is a, this they put the seeds in the prostate and that's it it's uh you know the implantation of the seeds yeah and then uh which will become a jewish holiday someday uh, the implantation of the bennett seeds uh, uh so the uh seed prostate is kind of like the lime in the coconut yeah no so we we get the uh, the seeds, and like uh, Albert wrote me, and he said, when they put the seeds in, don't forget to water them and give them plenty of sunshine. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but uh, it, uh, 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 you know, it's it's uh, it's an in and out procedure. I, if I go in at uh, eight, six o'clock in the morning to get set up for it, and the operation's at eight, I could be well be out of there by ten o'clock. Wow. You know, so, so was, it, but uh, if I can't pee. If I can't pee, I'll be out of there maybe at 3.30 in the afternoon. Oh, if you can't pee, they'll just give you a catheter. No, not necessarily. They, you know, it's a matter of just peeing enough. Uh, but the, I have a catheter anyway when I'm in there. When they, they put me under, they give, give me a catheter. I don't know why. And it says in the information that it may still be in me when I'm through with the operation, or they may remove it in the operating room. So. Okay. I don't like to explain. Yeah, you, I, 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 I very rarely do people need a catheter for any amount of time for this. If if worse, it's like for a day or two. And that's it, yeah. you know. But uh, you, you just want me to go through the agony you went through. That's what I, you want. Me I had to. ten days of catheter. Yeah, yeah, but you got used to it, didn't you? Yeah, I stayed in bed the whole time and uh, only got up to. Let the bag out. <laughs> to empty the bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, but uh, but you could have got you could have walked around and stuff, right? It was strapped to your leg, I believe. So I uh, it was hanging uh, off a. Uh, you know, you tie it to 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 like the belt on your. Uh, uh, w- what's that thing you wear? A, a night, not a nightgown, but a night uh, night um, a bathrobe. Bathrobe. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and what happens if it falls to the ground? Is it long enough that it won't yank itself out? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. But I, I don't think I'll probably, hopefully, I won't have to have that, you know. But they still want you to pee before you can leave. They did that to me when I had the last thing. Yeah. And, you know, that that is, that is just, I, I don't know how to put it. By the way, I described that whole process in the latest episode of... Uh, uh, Life in the Passing Lane, episode 69, I've Got Cancer, part two, which is up right now on, on the site, and it also is up on YouTube as a video. So it, it not, you don't see me or anything. You just see a slide saying, you know, um, uh, Life in the Passing Lane. So yeah, that's, uh, but, but I explained the whole procedure of the, uh, of, the, of the other radiation. And then I guess the number three episode will be about the seed implantation. And then I go home, and a month later I come back, and they do a CT scan on me and do some, uh, p- get, get some PSA from me, uh, which will probably go up rather than down, they say, but don't get worried about that. And, you know, and, and they just want to make sure the seeds are, are functioning properly. And uh, that it, they say it's not a diagnostic CT scan. It's a CT scan for their records. So I, I don't know what that's about, but... Well, Bree tried to call. Okay. But anyway, that's uh, that's me uh, and what I'm up to and what I'm going to be up to for the next uh, couple of days here. And, uh, you know, I just... Uh, only, the only thing I guess that bothers me uh, is that, um, uh, uh, you know, it's going to... Gee, Bree should be in there. But Bree, Bree, Bree tries to sign in and he can't sign in. Uh, are you there, Bree, at all? No, he's not. Hmm. Uh, well, that's strange. Uh, he's trying to do it with one hand. He's eating with the other hand. Yeah, yeah. He's always eating when we talk to him. Um, but, uh, no, it's a very, it's a, you know, it's, it's a in and out procedure, and I like that. I like, in fact, nowadays, they really try to get you in and out of the hospital as fast as possible, you know. If they don't have to keep you there for a whole day, they're, 
they're happy to do that. Now, did you have to stay overnight in the hospital? Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, oftentimes, oh, hello. Wait, wait, yeah. Wait, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Now we can hear you. What happened? Where where'd you? You tried to get in and you couldn't get in. Well, when I tuned in, uh, Phil was very loud. I was listening on TuneIn on my Lexi app, my Echo show. And uh, when you gave the, when you said the Albert joke, I thought it was a repeat because I think you said that yesterday. Yes, I said it yesterday. So I, so I thought, oh, this is a repeat. So I looked at the call just to see if it was ongoing. And, at my age, uh -huh. every show is a repeat. Okay. Uh, okay. So, you know. You, so I'm supposed to be helping my daughter write on why the Beatles can be considered progressive rock. And I said it had something to do with Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Progressive rock. Well, who, who gave her that assignment? Uh, her guitar teacher at school. Well, is that because her guitar teacher at school feels the Beatles can be considered progressive rock? Now, for, for the next five minutes, can we stay monetized and not use any language, and I will go over yeah. to her? Oh, sure. Okay. Well, I, I love staying monetized. I've uh, made, so far, folks, I've made $3.41. Oh, well, we're on live with Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Cam, this, uh, Alex, actually, you knew one of the Beatles, right? Yeah, I, 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 I knew, um, I knew John. Yeah. John Lennon. And, and I, and I have done interviews with all of them except Paul. Because he's so, dead. Can yeah. they be considered progressive rock? Well, progressive rock isn't a term that was in play at the time, and so therefore I don't think so. You were uh, rock and roll. I read something online that Strawberry Fields was considered progressive psychedelic, rock. Wasn't it? Uh, they, yeah, were psychedelic. they were psychedelic. Uh, that's the best way to describe them. Progressive is not a good way to describe the Beatles because. When progressive rock came in, I was around and was at a station that played progressive rock, and it was groups like Squeeze and uh, uh, you no, know. I that was alternative music. It was I alternative, thought. but it was also considered progressive. You know, uh, I don't think the Beatles were ever called progressive. Uh, they were called psychedelic, uh, and they certainly, you know, the Beatles created their own thing and they did a lot of stuff oh they did a lot of stuff yeah yeah they, i mean and they evolved huh? yeah they evolved right yeah they definitely evolved uh, i mean i i was looking up stuff online just to see and there, there were people making the argument that the beatles you know i mean they could be considered mm -hmm. you know my my favorite band of all time is rush and i know rush is progressive rock yeah but they're not alternative except they did have yeah. amy mann on yeah. you know time stand still yeah. So I think that you can say that the Beatles influenced progressive rock in the same way that the Beatles influenced everybody. I mean, to a certain extent. And the well, Beatles were influenced by Chuck Berry, Elvis Presley, uh, uh, you know, Fats Domino, I, I, all the early I, rock. I, I think they were influenced by those people because they, they liked those people, you know. They, they, and so obviously those people influenced them. But I don't see that their music is the end product of that influence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, so this is going to be a tough essay to write because I mean, well, oh, Google slide presentation. Okay. Uh, well, well, it's it, you know it sounds to me like her teacher uh, probably believes the Beatles were progressive and wants her to. He just put them on a list. Do you have that list? Wants he, he has a list of all the bands that you could select from. Mm -hmm. And the, oh. here we go. Uh, Queen, Jethro Tull, Marillion, Pink Floyd, The Beatles, Black Sabbath, Supertramp, Tool, Dream Theater, King Crimson, Rush, Genesis, Journey, mm. ELP, Kansas, The Moody Blues, Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I they, mean, they, I they were all King for the Crimson. most for the most part. They were either the, the ones you mentioned were either psychedelic bands, or were hard, were what, what do you call it? Uh, um, uh, 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 the hard rock, hard, the, uh, hard rock, uh, right? Uh, yeah, hard rock, yeah. Yeah, heavy metal. You know, I think I think yeah. you get to Led Dream Zeppelin, Peter you're getting, you uh, 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 yeah, yeah, Led Zeppelin's hard rock. Yeah, but but yeah. again, <laughs> yes. What do you want to say, Tony? Yeah, I, I can see. I was. I mean, I like Zeppelin. Because would you think? I would think Cream 
Zap cream was before Zaplin. I always thought. No, you know they Zeppelin all. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Okay, when you talk oh, about the word. Hold you, on a second. I got to give up. Tony, we're talking she, about cream. I got to see what the hell she. She's going to get great on this. She did for stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, <laughs> she's going to get graded on this. She, you, we don't want a D for her. Well, no, we want right. don't want to do a D for her. No. So we basically have to make the Beatles progressive rock. In the sense that they influenced everyone. I think what you could rock, say though. is they were an influence on progressive rock. That they they pretty much set the tone for what a lot of other bands did. They were the influence. What's the your imp definition? What's yes. your definition of progressive rock? You get a definition. I'm trying to remember when progressive rock started. Yeah, when exactly. did that start? Would that be? I was when I went to I W when I when I went to WPLJ in New York, the music we were starting to play there we considered to be kind of progressive rock. And the Beatles were already in existence, and Led Zeppelin was already in existence. So how can you be progressive rock if you weren't around when progressive rock yeah. was defined? That may be where... Yeah. I would think Genesis would be progressive rock. Oh, Genesis, yeah. I think, is what progressive, is progressive rock. rock. Yeah, like but synthesizes and you're, you're looking, kind of like long playing... You're, you're looking at, Alex, you're looking at progressive rock as being the uh, label that was given WPLJ and their marketing. Yeah, but here's, here's what I'm thinking of. The well, Beatles, really calling cool. the Beatles progressive is, I think, diminishing their worth because you're pigeonholing well, them. You're pigeonholing them in, a, in, a, in a, ty a, a type of music when, in fact, they were their own type of music. They were always outside okay. of the mainstream. They were always, in fact... Jumping ahead of the mainstream. Yeah, you're right about right. that, Alex. And therefore play. defining what everybody else was doing, and that even includes the Rolling Stones. You yeah, know, you think about that. Like they, to, they went from Hell to Skelter, which you could say is almost heavy metal, to Sgt. Peppers. I mean, it was told two totally different albums. Uh, was that influence of different members, though? I think he's right, no, Alex. I think they 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 defined their they could play anything. I think Helter I think if I, what, really what, what album was Helter so, Skelter on? That was so the I, White Album. Order, was it the White Album? The White Album came after Sgt. Pepper. I mean, think about how order, great these two are. Yeah, I mean, they, order, they they did a whole <laughs> different... I mean, Yesterday is different than Helter Skelter, is different than... And, and, and let's, take, let's take two things that uh, John Lennon did. He wrote Helter Skelter and he wrote... Uh, Oh, uh, what's what's a, uh, my favorite oh, my favorite Beatles song? Um, Is it on uh, Norwegian Wood? You like that album? That was a great album. I thought. Well, wait a minute. Here comes it, Rob awesome. Alfano. He he. I'm so, sure will have some I mean, opinions about that. What if we what if we say you know, uh, we, not to you know we say that the um, the Beatles existed before the term progressive rock, mm -hmm. but as with many areas in music, the Beatles had an influence on most everything. Yeah, um, uh, Rob. Rob, what do you what do you think, Rob? Dennis is calling sound. Yeah, I've been it. I've been listening to this, and in my opinion, progressive rock is more about <clears throat> almost like a radio format because you mm -hmm. could play a Beatles song on a progressive rock station. When I think of progressive rock, I think of Yes and Emerson, Lake and Palmer, yeah, and those King kinds, King Crimson. Um, you know, I did progressive rock in college. Asia? And it's, Asia is near the end because that was sort of 80s yeah. now, right? Yeah. yeah. By, by the time the 80s came around, yeah. progressive rock was sort of, they were, Asia was considered one of the super groups. Yeah. You know, that they were considered one of the, like in the 80s they came up with, but, because Asia was a, 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 a an amalgam of a bunch of different guys from big, Groups, right? And they were so like which a super Beatles group. song. Which Beatles songs do you think epitomize an influence on progressive rock? Because it's oh, well, well, you see, I mean, here's Sergeant, the here's the thing I was saying. Sergeant here's the Pepper. thing I was saying. I was trying to compare t yeah, two things. Lennon, himself. for instance, wrote Helter Skelter. He also wrote In My Life, which is a I mean, beautiful, exactly. beautiful I mean, song. Right, right. And they are two I mean, entirely different kind of genres, but they're all genres in which they kind of created that genre. Yeah, you know, you have the white album, That's and you a, have a really good music. Mm -hmm. you have the white album, and you have Sergeant Pepper's. Sergeant Pepper's was the one that woke everybody's eyes. Well, the up. Beach Boys went in. Was that the answer to Pet Sounds, or was it before? No, it was, Pet Sounds was the answer to Sergeant to Pepper. Sergeant Pepper. Okay, and the right. Beatles said they loved Pet Sounds. They thought it was terrific, and it, it the it Pet Sounds was an amazing album. Yeah.
But was what was really a, even a better album was Smile, but it never got released. At oh, least really? not not a, not at that time. Yeah. The, the, and Hall and Oaks. Huh? Or Smile. <laughs> Hall and Oaks. Hall and Oaks. Yeah, like I want Hall and Oats. <laughs> oh, they're not good. I like some of the hits. Yeah, you like their hits. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I like I, Barry Manilow. I know you hate him. I, like I so him. I think that we we start this off. We just say uh, the Beatles are. Um, an influence on most everything, and 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 while you know they they started, they existed, they were popular before the term progressive rock existed. They definitely, because of their willingness to experiment and to fuse different styles, they had a major influence on the bands. Well, what that, the best word to use is seminal. You know, yeah. they were a seminal a seminal band. And that uh, that they were the jumping off point for a lot of different genres. I mean, you look at the White we're Album. You look at the White that, Album. You got Helter Skelter in, on one track, and you got Rocky Raccoon on another. Exactly. Right. How, I mean, how I mean, different so can two songs be b than those right. two songs? You know. I mean, yeah, that that's kind of wild that it could just so much music come out of those two like, guys. It's crazy. I guess I'll have to look back. Well, actually, the music songs. didn't come out of those two guys. Some of the songs Ooh. came out of one of them, and some of the songs came out of the other. Very seldom did they ever write together. It's a shame, Alex, they, he died so young, 40. You always wonder what he would have did after that. They Ma didn't write together a lot, but what they did together was collaborate in the studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, there's a, great, there's a great podcast by a guy by the name of New York City Jock, uh, who has been in New York City for years, uh, he's a Q104.3. His name is Ken Dashow. And mm. Ken has a great podcast where you get the history of rock and roll and he brings in so many of these guys and they, and most every one of them lists the Beatles as an influence. In fact, so many of them say the same thing, which is I was in front of my television the night the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan show. And that was the, the moment mm. where I decided that that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, easily. I um, was in front of the television, and I said they need a haircut. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was... But, I mean, I think they were a seminal band, and I think that they did so many different kinds of things uh, because they were constantly experimenting with their sound and what their sound could do and, what they, and, and, and experimenting with the studio as well. So to call them progressive, you can't do that because the people who were progressive... They were seminal yeah. too. Yeah. I wouldn't call it progressive. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, they influenced it. I wouldn't call it progressive. Yeah. Well, Wikipedia they're says a pop that, band. They're like the original pop, you know, boy well, band, really. Wait, you okay? That um, that, that more. Again, but again, right? They 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 were they experimented. So they they were so much to so many. I mean, so is that? A, you could, oh, by the way, somebody just said here. Dave Polson said, "Pet Sounds was the answer to Rubber Soul." Oh, oh Rubber Soul! Wow. Yeah. Um, that's just, um, I've never that heard that. I, heard, I, I think, heard so. Right. I so, think so. so. I think so. It's fair to say. I mean, we would not directly call the Beatles progressive rock, but we we recognize that that they were the first to experiment on such a grand level that they certainly influenced the progressive rock movement. And many of their songs have been referred to as seminal progressive rock songs. And mm -hmm. we put the sources. Uh, mm -hmm. Really? What so well, yeah, I guess you could pick certain if you Beatles songs and, and call them progressive songs. But when, when, are you familiar with Yes? Like, I'm a huge yeah. Yes. Yeah. When you listen to Yes, those are, those are movements. Well, Roundabout's a hit, right? But when you listen to like close to the edge, you got 21 minutes. To me, that's the the epitome of progressive yeah. rock. You know, it's either a whole album side or you know an 18 minute track where it, it's almost like classical music because it moves. It the song is it's got different movements in it. I don't consider a Beatles song. They're eclectic, no no question. But I don't. I just wouldn't call them progressive. You got to find true, like, the ooh. teacher's uh, definition of progressive. Is he talking yeah. about, you know? Um, You're thinking songs have to be longer play wise. Well, not like just Genesis longer, but bands. Like Peter Gabriel or Genesis, they were progressive. I think with Phil, they were more of yes. a pop. Yes, exactly. I used to have like Land Lies Down on Broadway. That's a concept album, which I thought was phenomenal. 
I thought Mitchell Gabriel Collins. was actually more talented than Phil Collins, to tell you the truth. Oh, well, I used to argue like crazy with a guy in high school that uh, Neil Peart was a better drummer than Carl Palmer. I remember and those we, kinds of, those were fun arguments. <laughs> and Neil we used to, Joe but Bottom. he came around eventually and he agreed with me that Rush stood yeah, the test of time better than yes. I'll, 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 tell you, I'll tell you, to me, one of the ultimate uh, 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 bands for being progressive, okay, were the Kinks. Well, I like the Kinks, Ray Davies. Yeah, I mean, that was, I think, a progressive mm -hmm. band. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you think so? They inspired yeah. the White Stripes. Right. I like it. Yeah. Okay, they were ready to see her first paragraph. Break, we're going to have to work on this language, but go back there. This is what she's saying. The Beatles were a rock band formed in 1960 in Liverpool, England. Many people have called them the Fab Four. Though the Beatles could play any genre of music, we can recognize that they were the influence of modern-day progressive rock. Yeah, well, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. 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 Influence, right. That's a good way of tying it together. Okay. She's yeah. off to a good start. Thanks to you guys. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yay. Yay. Hey, uh, Alex, why don't you just call Ringo and get him on the phone and see uh, you know, what he Ring said. Ring him up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't have his phone number well, right now. So. <laughs> he hasn't talked to me since uh, I saw him in his office at Apple Records in London. So yeah. that was you know, that's the last okay, time I saw him. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll okay. be quiet. Is, now. is Paul listed? Is this number listed? <laughs> no. I think he's listed. We call him up. No, I never, I never interviewed Paul, and I never yeah. wanted to. You didn't is like that him, strange? Did I just, I, I, I often, well, I know my argument was uh, he should have been, um, he should have been excommunicated from the Beatles. I, I just, you know, I, I just never liked his music, and you can always, you, like you could always tell the difference part. between a Lennon song and a McCartney song. You know, McCartney's songs were sickly sweet, and even yeah. even if they were romantic, Lennon's songs had a had a beautiful poetic edge to them. You know, so. But the biggest Beatles songs were Paul songs. Uh, probably. Yes, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. You know. What about uh, Paul McCartney and the Wings? Would they be considered progressive? No. Uh, no. A rock band. No. They, were, a rock they band. were a rock band. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, um, uh, you know, in, in my life is, for my money, one of the most beautiful Great. songs ever written, and that's Lennon. Absolutely. That's Lennon. That's, that's, that's song. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so we... Well, I, I mean, my college station, we used to call ourselves the Progressive FM, but we were playing, every, like, R.E.M., Depeche Mode, The Cure, and, like, alternative well, new wave. Mm -hmm. well, but we also played, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the, that's why I said to me, progressive is a mo almost more of a radio format because yeah. it's about how you present the music. And with progressive rock, you could sneak in a Frank Sinatra song if it's in a theme. Because remember, back in the '70s when we were doing progressive rock in college, you would you would come up with a set of music, and that music was about sunsets or well, about well, days let, of the let week. Me or, yeah. Let me explain progressive radio. Progre the progressive format on radio, and then we'll get to Josh and talk to him about stuff. Uh, uh, unless you want to jump in on any of this, Josh. Um, you no, know. that's okay. Like <laughs> that's okay. Cincinnati isn't progressive yet. Well, no. What I was going to say is, progressive was a term that that was originally coined by radio stations to say we're progressive and what they let they they said they did is they let their disc jockeys basically bring their libraries from home and play them on the air and play anything they wanted to play and it was freeform was the other term they called progressive rock radio and I, I went I went to work at a freeform station. I said freeform they said play anything you want. I said how about if I spent a whole day playing Frank Sinatra? And they said, I wouldn't do that if I were you. It's not our format. I said, oh, wait a minute. You just said I could play anything. You know. Uh, so uh, so much for, you know, progressive radio. But you radio. could play a Sinatra song if it fit in what you were trying to do in a set. You could play a Sinatra song. I would hear about it the next day on some of the stations I was at. Okay. When I was at WPLJ, although I didn't play music a lot at WPLJ, but if I had played Frank Sinatra, you know, did a whole set with Frank Sinatra, they'd probably say the next day, why, why the hell did you do that? You know? Yeah, yeah. And I'd I say, because it's it. good music. WFM would get away with that, though. Yeah, well, of course. Because they were, yeah. The college I mean, FM Alice stations. Steel, yeah. What's that? 
Uh, uh, at our college station who locked the door and played Beatles for four hours until they could find somebody with an extra key and get in there and take them off the air. By the way, nobody remembers <laughs> Allison Steele, but she was on the WNEW here in New York. She played and and uh, uh, Zachary used to go on oh. before her at uh, WNEW for a while until yeah. he came over and became part of WPLJ. And they talk a lot like this, you know. This oh. is how 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 Zach Hello, talked. To, he talked ah. a lot like this. Hey, Alex, and well, let me finish it. Can I finish the story, please? Jeez. I didn't know it was a story. It, yeah, it is a story. Uh, but he talked like this, you know, and he kind of was, well, you know. And he, every night when he would be introducing that Allison Steele was coming up, she called herself the night bird. And he would go, Allison Steele, the night bird. <laughs> and nobody, most people never caught it, but he kept calling her the night turd <laughs> every single night. And, you know. When he finally came over to WPLJ, uh, I said to him, boy, uh, you used to call her the night turd, didn't you? He says, yeah, I hated that, that broad. <gasps> they hated her. Yeah. What did she look like? Uh, she sounded uh, sexy. I can't remember what she looked like. I never, I never met her personally. But Who I, was the one that didn't like you at the party, Alex? Remember what was her name again? Oh, Carol, Carol um, Miller. Carol Miller. Yes. Carol Miller. That's a funny story. Yeah, I'm going, gee, Carol, you, you sure carry a grudge for a good many years, don't you? You know, it's because I didn't say hello to her one day in the hall, and she thought I was snubbing her. That was her. And for years, she then has hated me. <laughs> I mean, do you think she's that poison? Get over it. Yeah. You drink her own poison. Take Asian people is drinking poison yeah. and expect them to die. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, well, what the hell? You know. So I left the party. I didn't. Want well, to have to put up with that kind of crap for the rest of the night from somebody, you know? So, ELJ went Christian, and now a Boston station, to the AAF, went Christian. It seems like all the stations are going Christian. Well, yeah. because there's very little you can do on AM radio anymore that's going to make you money, except sell Caesar time, FM except stations. sell time to preachers, you know? These are FM stations, or, or, or FM. Time. I mean, uh, it, the radio is is dead in the water. Okay. Yeah. It's it's it, it, it and what it's been replaced by are podcasts and podcasts are 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 not as good as radio was, you know. Oh yeah, you get your variety and you can listen to the stories you want to hear and so on and so forth. But it it just doesn't. It's a completely different medium and somehow yeah. it's robbed from the original medium. I think and, that's because you can't play music really on the internet because of licensing. But that's well, the same. That has something to do with it. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it, it also, also because you have you had a finite amount of radio stations to listen to in your market, and in podcasts, everything is narrow casted because you want to try to stand out, and so the difference between a podcast and a broadcast is the fact that that's why I love that guy's podcast that I talked about before because mm -hmm. they're very narrow casted. You would never do that on the radio. You need more mass appeal. Yeah, I guess I guess you're right about that. But the thing is that you don't want Matt, you don't want uh, uh, narrow casting on podcasting any longer because everybody's out to make a buck out of it, and so they're out to get millions of listeners so they can you know Good make make a lot of money off of it, and and so consequently the rush is on, is pushing they're pushing out all those nice little mom and pop podcasts these big guys with all the money to put out. There's a there's a guy on CBS uh, this morning. Uh, what's his name? Um, Mo Mo uh, Rocco, oh. uh, and he has a thing called Mobituaries, and that's his podcast. And every Sunday, we have to watch a five minute commercial for his goddamn Mobituaries. Easy. Yeah, I, I know. I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say anything. And and every every night they they. Listen, I did it. I did my latest cancer thing, and I put it up on YouTube, and they they flagged it. <laughs> and I had to I had to, I had to ask them to go check it and make sure. And of course, there was nothing on there that was a problem. But anyway, let me let me go on with uh, what I was saying. Um, uh, where was I? What was I talking about? I forgot. Oh, Come on. Moraka. Oh, Moraka. So things like that, and then he just goes on plugging it. Well, he's got the 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 power and majesty of CBS to promote his podcast. 
All right. So what does that do to Albert, uh, Albert, uh, uh, Rob, if he wants to start a, a podcast and, and have a little podcast, his little own podcast going called uh, Rob Bituaries or something like that, you know? I, I just I realized I, I had my that. echo on. And do you hear that, folks? Right. Yeah, I have my echo on. Um, uh, so anyway, so I, I, I just don't understand, you know, what, what, what happens is the little podcast, yeah, it'll get their listeners and so on, but it's never going to get the chance that a guy like Mo Rocca has having this big megaphone to plug it, you know? So yeah. that's how your breakfast with Bennett's were so, uh, and, uh, you know, your shows were, did so well because you could plug it all week on their, on your show. In your radio show. What do you mean? Those were those were radio shows. No, no, no. You, you, when you'd have a uh, 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 go to a hall and uh, oh, when I'd have the comedy shows. Well, that was part of my contract. Uh, these are the ones that you actually you, received you, money. It, for. That, that was part of my remuneration from Live One Hundred and Five. Is that when I had these concerts, I could plug them free of charge. Well, but your plugging on Live One Hundred and Five made them very successful. Well, of course, because I had a very successful radio program and a lot of people were listening to it, so a lot of people heard my plug for the show. Right, so if you just put flyers up on, on telephone poles, it wouldn't have been That's as correct. successful. That's correct. Radio. I had the place to plug it. Yeah. Right, exactly, yeah. and that's what this guy on CBS has. Yeah. But I wasn't overbearing about it. I would simply do a spot for it every, uh, every hour, on the show, a little one-minute plug for it, maybe less than that. And uh, then when the show was sold out, I quit plugging it. And that was usually after the first day because the tickets usually sold out in the first day, you know. Yeah. So. But, I mean, it, but oh, I'm, I'm not talking about that. You got us off the subject. Well, we're, talking, we're talking about podcasts and we're talking about the ability of the mom-and-pop podcast to compete with, you know, if the mom-and-pop podcast plans on making money, they better go somewhere else in life because they ain't going to get rich. I, I was only talking about the power of having a, uh, a, a show on radio, for instance, or television, and then mm -hmm. being able to plug your podcast. Mm, yeah, well, it, it's, that's, you're, you're absolutely correct. You know? yeah. uh, but, I mean, it, all I'm saying is, is that it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of, I don't know. I, I, it, 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 would you agree with me, uh, Rob, that it's 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 it, it, the average person can't do a podcast and really get a good plug in for it? You know, you the reason you do a podcast is to is to get your jollies. It's you're not doing it. For yeah, money. I'm. Uh, uh, believe me, I'm not doing this for the money. Although I have made uh, so far three dollars and forty one cents. Well, well, there you go. Don't <laughs> spend it on and, with the other hosts. And uh, you should get some of that, uh, Rob. Uh, you know, that, what's that? Uh, Say that again. You could, to the to the shows on the network. So you should be part of that three dollar distribution. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I'm planning on giving Jack Bishop forty one cents. <laughs> so you know, uh, it, it you know it's how come so much? Well, because it's a good show. I don't want to. I want to keep him happy. <laughs> well, you know something similar alex is happening in newspapers as well i i guess in television but you know it's funny it's it's kind of like our political system you know we we recognize we want to change it mm -hmm. it's the same way that uh television and radio are changing and newspapers are changing but we can't change it overnight like i mean we we could say no television stations on the air tomorrow no newspapers tomorrow you know and it all has to be digital, but we're not there yet. So it's like we're in this phase of what's going to come and what was. Well, I kind of, you know, I wish radio were in a better position now because I do think it has a, a beautiful distribution uh, system, much better than, than the Internet, uh, because you can, you know, one signal goes out to, in New York City, maybe, you know, 10 million, 20 million people. Um, you don't have that with a with a with the internet because uh, you you really have to have a uh, literally a feed to everyone. Each one of you right now, as you're watching Skype, okay, or watching YouTube, are getting one stream, and somebody else is getting another stream, 
Another person's getting another stream. And so it's not as efficient as, as radio broadcasting was. The problem with radio broadcasting is it didn't know how to change itself. It knew years ago how to change itself when television came in. They stopped doing drama shows, and they started playing music. And then they did news, and then they did talk shows. And they did things that were uniquely, became uniquely, became radio, and, and got out of what they had been doing for years because television was now doing it. Well, once the Internet came in and podcasts started happening, they didn't know how to adapt to that, you know. I want to know why some of these radio stations aren't running podcasts, you know, finding good podcasts like this one yeah. and, 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 and running them as part of their programming. They, there are a few stations that have done that or tried it, but they really haven't gotten there yet. Well, yeah. isn't that sort of like um, the, what are they, like when they, uh, what do you call it when a station accepts money for time and they run the uh, brokered, oh, brokered, brokered, brokered yeah. programs? Yeah. They're, they're basically podcasts. Yeah. They're just, they're commercial yeah. pod podcasts, but they're and they have those podcasts. And, the, and the reason you see so many religious stations is you've got these guys, uh, these these phony preachers with uh, dollar bills in their hand who show up at the front door and say, sell me a half hour. Basically, you know. on the satellite television, Dr. Gene Scott was uh, that type of podcast. You know, he uh, didn't he rent? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but but religious radio stations have always sold time to these preachers. It's been going on ever when I was when I was starting out in the business. My my bosses took over a radio station, which was uh, no, it was KJBS was the station, and its transmitter was on a, on a street in San Francisco, and um, they, the took it, they took it. They took it. They took what? CNET, CNET was a... Uh, no, no, no. You know, they, they from, don't, don't, don't get me off the topic, okay? What they were doing was they had a... They, they literally had a religious format. And what they did is they just simply sold the time to all these preachers, you know? And they'd come in and pay good hard cash. And they made more money with that than they would have ever made if they'd gone out trying to sell advertising or had a whole, you know, sales department and things like that. So these guys who are switching to a religious format know exactly what they're doing, you know? I, I, I guarantee you if you had money and advertisers with, you know, who could support this show, this, mm -hmm. this podcast, you could buy time on probably WABC in New York oh, on a weekend yeah. and, and run this show, obviously a cleaned up version, but mm -hmm. you could, they would sell you two hours and you could broadcast this. I, this I, I listen, the, at, I, I looked at Cumulus's latest, uh, latest, uh, uh, quarter final, you know, quarter quarterly Qu money thing, whatever it is. Quarter, quarter. Quarterly report. And they've lost money. Lots of it. They're hemorrhaging. Okay. I, they probably sell it to me at three o'clock in the afternoon on a Monday. <laughs> well, WABC yeah. was just sold, so it's owned by a, it's owned by a New Yorker now. It's a single-owned radio station. Is it really? Me. I don't think yeah. so. Did it? Yeah, no, it did. There are some shows that they will carry with where you don't have to pay. I mean, like, if you know, what are they doing on the overnight? Like, why? Hmm. Why wouldn't you just plug in something that's different and interesting? You know, uh, is it I free? Is is that the guy that owns the uh, uh, what do you call it? Grocery stores. Yes, the guy that owns the groceries. Oh, really? It's owned by Cumulus Media still. Yeah, but he bought it already. They're just waiting for the the uh, the handover to take place. Uh, Anytime now, it's going to be owned by this guy who. What's his name? The, He's a Greek guy. You know, a long Greek name. Yep, a long Greek name. Yeah. Mm. Let me see here. WABC sale. Uh, John uh, Katismatis. Yeah, that's him. You know how much he paid for it? Uh, Three million or something? No, 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 no. A little bit more. But in the old days, if I want, if I was going to sell an AM radio station uh, with that kind of signal, because at that place on the dial with fifty thousand watts, they could blast your fillings out. Okay, all right. With that kind right. of thing, it would cost. I, I think maybe. A, I think at one time I heard that. WABC was maybe worth something like two, three hundred million dollars. I mean, uh, that wow. much. He, he, he bought it for twelve point five million. Yeah, he wants it, to bring back the uh, uh, what he said was the original or the classic 
WABC, and I think that might have been a talk format. Yes. Not, no, not music, it was a music but, format. Well, no, I know it was originally well, a music format, but I think ca this Casavetes guy wants to bring back Casamatis. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, the talk format. He, he was saying that he wanted to bring back WABC to to what it was to its great well, talk. If I hit days. the law, if I hit the Powerball. If I hit the Powerball, we will buy WABC and we'll run GabNet 24 hours. Right. <laughs> and who cares? We don't even have to monetize. We'll just yeah. pay the FCC for the buy. Listen, he's he's wrong in thinking he can go back to that format. Well, that's what he said. Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah he, it's going to cost a lot of money because he wants live local talk radio again. He owns all the grocery stores, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and he'll, he'll probably have to sell them before he's through. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, um, I, I think it's noble. I think it's wonderful. It's, uh, but you can't go backwards. You've got to go. But that was like forwards. the old days in radio. You'd have a, a department store would own a radio station. Yeah, that's but, right. Yeah, yeah, but you have to go forward. You know, and uh, I think what he has to do is is go back to to the basics of radio, but then modernize it. You know, put a new twist on it. But that means getting people to listen to radio again, and they've gone already. You know, you know sometimes the, the retro stuff is 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 what's hot now. If you look at no, cars, but you're, but if, you no, what's not, no, and, uh, I don't care what you're saying. It, it it may be hot now. Retro may be hot, but not in radio. You know, nothing's hot in radio. Radio is dead. AM. First What's of all, first of all, your first job is having to get people to listen to radio again yeah. as a habit. And they don't do that. They've maybe they've got Sirius XM in their car. Or maybe they're listening to podcasts all day. Or maybe they've just got a uh, their their iPod, their iPhone rather, with their music on it, and that's what they play in the car. That's it. Yeah. You know. Yep. And if they want to listen to an occasional podcasts, yeah. they put that on too. Isn't it, it, there oh. some baseball team that's no longer going to be on radio? Isn't that in San Francisco or Sacramento yeah. or somewhere? I don't know, but that that oh. sounds like I don't know if it's I haven't heard the story, but I I would imagine it sounds logical, doesn't it? The, the well, Oakland A's, I, I don't know. The Oakland A's are mm -hmm. no longer going to be on radio. Yeah, were, is that because is yeah. that because no radio station will have them, or because the team decided because? That's one thing radio does a great job at, baseball. Yeah, yeah, but no longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, That's, enough yeah. of talking about radio, and we're losing mm -hmm. we're losing listeners by talking about this. And of course, I care about getting every listener I can. I don't have the ability of Mo Rocca to plug my show on CBS Sunday Morning. Okay. So. You went up to one point four on the uh, YouTube uh, subscribers. Yes, we're over. We 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 we've gained a lot of YouTube's even after I did that. What I called my little begging for people to try and get me over a thousand, it just kept going. You know, uh, we've gotten over two hundred new subscribers in the last month. You want to like one of those PBS style telethons? Come on, I need subscribers. Push the button. Oh, I asked people the other day to go in and, and go to YouTube and just watch the first four seconds of the commercial. You know, <laughs> and and my money went up by about oh I don't know seventy cents or something like that. You know, my revenue. But anyway, uh, I want to bring up something. It's kind of interesting today. Anybody hear this story about uh, about um, Bernie Sanders and no, what Russia and the yeah, fact Russia. that the that the yeah. uh, CIA or somebody the State Department had uh, privately told him that uh, the Russians were trying to game the system so that he would win the nomination. Yeah. Okay, so... The so, Democrats don't quit. Wait, wait a minute. Hold, wait, Phil, Phil, let's, we know what you're going to say with something like that, so don't be predictable, okay? It's the truth. No, the point I... What I'm going to say may not be that predictable. I think this mm -hmm. is the one reason that we cannot have Bernie Sanders as the nominee, because it's obvious that the Russians feel, and Trump feels, that... Sanders is the guy he wants to go up against if he's going to win. He does want to. This is nothing more than another Democratic uh, 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 plan. No, Josh, does that make sense to you, Josh? Well, I think he is. He, he, he does want him, I think. Because he, you hear what he said about Mini Mike? He says he's so small he doesn't wear boxes. Yeah, but uh, Josh, what do you think? 
Do you, you think that they that the whole reason the Russians want to go fix the election so that uh, uh, Bernie gets the nomination is because that's the guy that Trump can beat? No. Yeah, I mean that if Sanders is the nominee, Trump will be reelected. So that's what I think would happen. So I mean, of course that's what they would want. They would like to have. Trump elected. I mean, I don't know why Phil would say this is some made-up Democratic thing or whatever. No. Um, there are a lot of Democrats who are admitting, yeah, they can believe that because they don't want Sanders to be the nominee. So, I mean, it's it's not a, a, a put-on or, I mean, making something up to hurt their own cause. I mean, it that just seems to be the case. I, I, think I don't want it to be the nominee. You got to look further. You got to say to yourself, the Russians don't care who's president. They don't care who's running. They don't care who wins. What they care about is creating a dissension in the country. Boy, am I sorry I got into politics and, tonight. And just, I'm sorry I even brought it up. And a disbelief in, uh, in our system. Going. So, okay. You know. You don't hear my opinion. I, I mean, no, I, I don't know why the, you, the Russians would not care who i think they care a great deal uh, i mean i think i mean i think all countries care a great deal who the leader of their opposing you know leadership is in the world standing i mean that's why they meddle in each other's election i mean we've done it for you know decades i mean it 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 seems like why would we care who the president of some little tiny country in South America is, but yet over the years we have taken it. So I don't find it far fetched to believe that a country like Russia would care great about who the who the president of the United States is. I, I mean yeah. we're the number one app. Yeah, but well, why they probably are. why would Russia work to try and get Bernie Sanders nominated? And the only thing I can think of is because they want Trump to win. It's well, their I'm opinion sure that do. that's I what mean, it's going to take for Trump to why, win. Why wouldn't they want Trump to win? In his tenure, they have enjoyed a pretty decent run of success here. I mean, you know, I, mean mm -hmm. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I'm sure that, uh, that that I mean that's how people look at it. Why wouldn't you want him to continue to win? That just like if you're an Ohio State football fan, you'd like to see. Uh, Jim Harbaugh coached Michigan for forever because he's never beaten him one time. It's like, we don't want the coach to get fired. He fucking loses to us every year. This is outstanding. Yeah. I mean, so uh, if you're the the Russian government, yeah, I'm sure you'd love to see Trump stay in office for yeah. as long as possible yeah. because he's very cooperative. I mean, I don't think him. Phil had I mean, the... Think he has good intentions, that's fine. Yeah. If you think he has bad intentions, that's fine. But the fact is, yeah. he's been very cooperative. Phil this, seemed so. to have this yeah. idea that it was the Democrats trying to game the system by bringing this thing up. No, this was the State Department that told Bernie this. And yeah. uh, I, I, I don't know why Bernie would even make it public, because it made me immediately think, well, then that's maybe who the Russians think has the worst chance of going up against Trump. Uh, um, I mean, what? I mean, and... and and I'll let Phil answer. I'll, I'll hear his argument out. He knows that. I mean, what what would be the Democrats? Uh, I guess I just maybe don't follow. So I'll let him explain. I don't know what they're. What would they have to gain by making you know, that up? Phil's to me, it seems like it hurts yeah. their party. But because I'll, because I know, wanted to tr because I wanted to try and keep the conversation going in one direction. Phil is now talking to people on the phone rather than paying well, attention to the show. That's rude. Here, here's. One of the interesting things is I read a poll that says Trump beats all the Democrats. The only one who comes close is Biden. And what I what I thought was really strange was even if you look in Wisconsin, Trump beats Klobuchar by like 20 points or something. Mm -hmm. So like in her backyard, I mean Klobuchar is always saying I won elections. I I, I mean I, great. I don't I don't know what poll that that is, but I I haven't hardly seen a single poll that says of multiple Democratic nominees right now that he doesn't lose. I mean, and, and and nationally, I mean, but I don't care because it's not time to vote yet. And who yeah. knows who goes and who votes and who knows who says 
who they're going to vote for is true. I mean, it, it, it historically, the polling is not all that accurate. I, for a slight moment today, was saying to myself, I don't know if I'm even going to vote. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, that I was getting that disgusted with this whole process. On both sides. You know? I it's mean, you, yeah. It's USA Today. Yeah, I can get uh, as disgusted as I want with... Uh, uh, I wonder who phone who Phil uh, is pho of phoning to, who he's talking to. Look, see what he's doing. That, that's doing? that's rude, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, well, it gives us a break. Huh? You got company. He's on the phone. We need a break. It's a Phil free break. <laughs> it's a Phil <laughs> free break. It's brought to right. you by Phil free. <laughs> probably talking to Putin. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a Quinnipiac poll, and I know polls are crazy. Uh, you know. Break it four times if he's a Democrat. He's probably charging somebody four times they should be charged. <laughs> what? He's from Bernie Sanders? Yeah. Con I mean, I, you know, oh, I just... in Wisconsin. I yeah. just, I, and I, I do think that Bernie is the worst possible candidate for the Democrats to put up against But Trump. here's the question, though. He's, if he I keeps see. winning the... It's on the, the states, the swing state. To give it to him. Well, um, I think it ain't, it ain't over yet for Bloomberg. Okay, uh, I think he's going to go into another debate and come back much better than he was I hope the other so. night. I hope so. Uh, I like uh, well, he, today, you know what he did today is he actually the came NBA's. out and uh, said he's releasing th three of the women from their uh, non-disclosure agreements, oh. and I think those are the three major women. He said if they want to, you know, um, could, it's up to them have, because sorry. remember that. Uh, you know, non-disclosure agreements benefit both parties, okay? That's right. And they may not want people to know who they are. Yeah, you yeah know. exactly. That's true. So, uh, That's and true. I think the other night when he had that thrown at him by Elizabeth Warren, who I think is this, I can't stand her. I just I can't, can't stand her. I can't She's like my second grade teacher. Uh, She's not bad. <laughs> I want to yell Enough already. Yeah. Um, is she, is door. she... Um, um, uh, when she went after him for that, he didn't have an answer because he didn't have his lawyers there to give him an answer. You know, I'm serious because I think he didn't know what the legal answer would be about whether he could release these women from their non-disclosure agreements. And now that he's gone back to his lawyers and talked to them about it, and they said, yes, you can do that, he's saying, okay, I'm going to do it. Does that that's make sense? One of the things where I thought he could have scored points by saying, you know, she's like, release them now on TV. You can do it. It's just you. I think, he, you know, one of the things is he can say is, uh, you know, I like to deliberate and take my time and get to get it right. Yeah. I, you know, I don't. Well, no, what he did, what he did say, they, they like said, you might do. they said on, uh, on, the, on, on the news, they said he refused to reveal the 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 uh, uh, refused to say that he would release them from their non-disclosure agreements, and that's not what he said at all. He said uh, it's up to the women. Uh, there was some answer like that where he he was basically saying, you know, I can't just go ahead and release yeah. them from those sure. without first getting their approval on the whole thing I as well. And you, know what I didn't, oh, sir. you know what I didn't like what? what she was doing, Alex, when he said, it was almost like she was accusing him of some type of harassment. Because then he said, it wasn't against me, it was against another worker at her, or whatever. Well, no, there were other workers, yeah. I but there was, it, was a, it was a joke, I think, that he told that was not in good yeah, taste that some women was felt really was. Like she was yeah. trying to paint him like he was a sexist, I thought. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't uh, know. She came across as crass to me. Yeah. Like it wasn't professional the way she was saying it. Yeah, but she's she's uh, on fire on social media. That's what gets you hits, you know. I I know that it's bad. We don't like it, but it helped her. But you yeah. know what? Let's see how she finishes now in the next yeah. uh, whatever they have. If she That's finishes true. fifth again, she should just drop out. I think she's going to come out third. In uh, in, uh, in Nevada, I, I mean, think I think Bernie's going to come out first, and I yeah. think. Uh, Either Buttigieg or Biden's going to come out second. I don't know who, you know. Mm. Um, um, Biden, I think, is pretty much through, you know. And you know what, Alex? She kept saying, she kept saying, the women, the women. What about the guys who might have signed non-disclosure? 
Why yeah, does it always have right. to be Why, one side? Yeah, right. Well, I mean, when I when I when I was when I was when I was fired when I was fired by by Sirius XM, I I uh, signed a non-disclosure in order to get my uh, my severance. You know that I wouldn't, among other things, that I wouldn't sue them for the for ageism, and that uh, I wouldn't um, uh, reveal business secrets. You know. So I mean, uh, non-disclosure agreements apply to males, a lot of males as well as females. Um, in this case, these females probably walked away with several million dollars each, and in return, what the company wanted was a non-disclosure agreement where they, among other things, would not give up company secrets or uh, or say why why in fact they did sue, you know, and that they, on the other hand, would not would also not uh, yell at them either. So, can I actually Gee, Phil was listening to the show company. for a while, but now he's not listening. When you, uh, Alex, when you work for a big company, when you get hired, do they tell you that right up front? Like, hey, listen, if we part ways, it's just company policy. So they know it up front when they're taking the job, right? Unless you're working for Phil. Yeah. <laughs> Where yeah. anything goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean. Um, do it? Um, you, you know gotta, what's crazy you, you in remember that is Steyer is actually pulling quite high. He must have spent a lot of money there. Wait a minute. Is he still in the game? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I can't even remember but who's in the game and who isn't in the game anymore. But it, it's Sanders uh, by, a, I mean, in a big lead, according to three different polls yeah. in Nevada. Uh, then Biden and Buttigieg are fighting it out. And Buttigieg and Warren are a little close. Yeah, but here's uh, the thing. Who gives a damn mm -hmm. about Nevada? Do you know how small yeah. that state is in population? It's still the smallest populated state in the country small? and the most yeah. uh, non-populated state in the country. Yeah. You, know, you got to go 300 you got to go 300 miles outside of Reno to get to the next major city. Oh my god. How do they live in a desert? That's <laughs> oh, oh, the, de the, the desert the desert can be very nice. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's so hot, Alex. Best, they don't even get rain, I think. Yes, they do. Best place, yeah, the one of the best places I've ever been is where they hold Burning Man, which is out in the great Brock, Black Rock Desert in Nevada. And it's just nothing, but it's like they're on the moon. It's like all this cracked, parched land like, uh, like oh, wow. you would find on the moon. And I got in my car one night, and I started at one end of it, <laughs> and I started driving to the other end, at about 100 miles an hour and turn my headlights off. Because I wasn't going to hit anything. There was, was nothing the out there. Everything must look the same. But it, there was something beautiful about it. There was something yeah. just enchanting about it. it, it you know, so. Uh, you know. You still there, Phil? What is he doing? I, he, he, I don't know. He just phased out. He decided to play, get, get mopey on us. Um Having his period. He's having his period right now. Oh, don't say that. That's sexist. Oh, that's I'm, sexist, like Tony. You know, I'm, I'm listening. If I say anything, I get shot down. So no, I, you're not. You don't get shot down. But we know. Down. Here's what happens, Phil. We know exactly what you're going to say. All right. So that's why I'm so here. So quit, quit being predictable. No, that's not why you're here. You're here to be part of the conversation and maybe every yeah. now and then say, hey, you know, that wasn't right what Trump did that time. Well, no, no, that's what you're trying to get a sound bite, and I'm trying to say that I've got a position. A sound bite for what? For what? Know, my te my television promo. commercials? One of your the, lead, the lead for tomorrow morning's news on GabNet, right. the 6 a.m. broadcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, Bill says Trump uh, eats uh, Martians. You know? <laughs> oh, okay, that's good. Phil admitted it. You you haven't heard I'll our three-hour morning that. newscast every morning here on GabNet? <laughs> uh, I feel good about Bernie's, uh, you know, his his uh, talks and his speeches and his rallies. But at the end of the day, I, I'm watching those Bloomberg ads and I'm just thinking, you know, he edits it, the reality and people are into edited reality. It's like the event occurred, the debate occurred. He wasn't that great. But if you watch his ads, it looks like he mopped the floor with everybody. And he has 61 <laughs> billion dollars i heard that he bought all of facebook all the facebook ads for like one or uh, for one day uh like across all the streams across everything for on super tuesday or something this if he if bloomberg 
wants to buy it, I think he can. I think he I can think too. He can. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. He, um, um, you know, he he. And what was the thought that I was coming up with? I, I completely, completely He's getting bogged me. down with non-disclosure. Well, no, 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 no. I was going ahead with uh, just his his power. But here's what he does with the commercials, and it does bother me a little bit. Have you seen the one with Obama? I think it's been running so much that you can't yeah. miss it. In which Obama is saying, and uh, Mike Bloomberg has been the, a great mayor for New York City. And he, they make the whole thing look like... It's it's Obama endorsing Bloomberg, and the very last line in it is 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 audio, of um, uh, 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 and that's uh, uh, Obama saying something to the extent of that's why I'm endorsing Bloomberg. Well, that that was for his mayoral race, okay? Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, but but he made it sound like it was an endorsement from Obama. That's right. Um, and I bet you there are people out there who would, after seeing that, would say, uh, if you ask them, did Obama endorse Bloomberg? Uh, yes, yes, uh, yeah, that, that's what happened. Uh, I'm voting for Bloomberg. Yeah, but the last line in the commercial, my right, is something to that effect of that's why, that's why Bloomberg's my guy or something <laughs> like that, you know? And you're going, yeah. <laughs> you know, the power of advertising. Yep. Yeah. I think it was a great ad. Oh, you know, it's it, if if I had to show somebody a textbook example of advertising and of of of, uh, of, of uh, powerful advertising, I'd show them Bloomberg ads. Wouldn't you, Rob? Absolutely. I I I know that's. I don't watch the news. All I see is the the advertising, and it's all Bloomberg. And I like what he says. Or the ads are great. Yeah. yeah. The trouble with Bloomberg is he ain't much to look at or listen to. You he know. looks like a turtle. He looks like he, yeah, he looks like a turtle. Look, yeah, he looks like a turtle. Look at the people all around the country who buy Coca Cola and buy Pepsi. You know, and it's really bad for them. You really shouldn't have that much, but they buy it like crazy. Why? Because there's ads all over the place everywhere that tells you Coke brings a smile, makes you happy. Advertising, I, I don't know. I think it works, and I think he's he he's going to surprise a lot of people. On well, Super look, Tuesday. let's give you an example. Everybody was saying, why is it that he hasn't been going to any of these debates? Why is it he wasn't in Iowa and New Hampshire? Why is it he isn't in Nevada? Why is it he's buying all this time? What does he want to do, waste his money? Well, he got into second place and into that debate through just that advertising. Very, That's very all that he... His, his, data, his data analyst told him, don't go to Iowa. It's not going to be good for you to you know, mix and mingle with him. But... I don't know if he did like one and it were completely set up and that, you know, all video and they edited it. Maybe yeah. he only needs one. It won't help him after what he said about the farmers, you know, Hey, anybody can plant the seed and water it. And, you know, they, I they, didn't hear that. Oh yeah. Something about, they don't have much gray matter. Uh, <sighs> Uh, he, he was he was talking about farmers. Does anybody re, uh, remember that? Uh, let me see here. You're, you're doing inside baseball. Most people are drinking Coke and Pepsi, and they're walking down the street, and they hear Obama just endorsed uh, Bloomberg. I mean, Bloomberg so farmer like quote. Not reading newspapers. Okay, here's they're not a, watching the debates. Most of them. Uh, That's a very few. Those are the the. 25% here and 25% here that are going to support Trump and support Sanders come hell or high water. There's a vast majority in between Joe's six pack. They just want to go to work, get home, you know, so try Alex, to figure things out. Are you looking they don't up, even know Buttigieg is gay. You, most people. Did you? Are you looking up the derogatory statements that uh, Bloomberg made about farmers? Uh, yes, I'm trying to find it exactly. I never heard of it, by the way. Um, I did. I heard it several well, times. That's all right, but. Uh, it wasn't the kind of thing that. Oh, okay. He said, he said, and I don't win, know when he said this. He said this in 2016 at Oxford. Hmm. Okay. And he offered up as an ad hoc history of labor, agriculture, and industry leading up to his own sophisticated era. He said, I could teach anybody, even people in this room, no offense intended, to be a hmm. farmer. Bloomberg told the audience at the Distinguished exactly. Speaker Series at University of Oxford Business School. It's a process. You dig a hole, you put a seed in it, and you put dirt on top of it, add water, and up comes the corn. He, he wasn't really putting down anybody. He was simply talking about the simplicity of that, that kind of but life. It's not simple. 
today's farmers go through. Yeah, a- I know. Uh, that's what I'm saying. As, as someone with an agronomy background and, and, and as a licensed applicator, and I fucking hate farmers, okay? I can't <laughs> fucking stand them. All right? But it, it isn't that simple. I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. You, you guys that live in these population centers with a gajillion other people can think Mike Bloomberg is the greatest guy in the world, and that's fine. But I'm just telling you, if you drive 50 miles in any direction outside of them, you're going to find a bunch of people in this country. Well, he, he's just another he, well, rich New York asshole. Yeah. Who well, he, he can then fix also everybody's problems. Yeah. So he, what's he, Donald wait a minute. Wait a minute. Then he also I said, for fucking Trump." Wait a minute. Then, then, he, then he also said, "You you put a piece of metal on a lathe and you turn the crank in the direction of the arrow, and you can have a job." And we created a lot of jobs. At one point, ninety-eight percent of the world worked in agriculture. And today it's two percent in the United States. This guy's an elitist prick. No, he's not being an yeah, elitist prick. Exactly. Exactly. So here again, people here where I live hear that, and even if they're accurate, and they say, "Oh, well, here again, us poor working folks should thank you, rich folk, for creating all them jobs for us to come work at, because we's too fucking stupid to have done it on ourselves." Yeah. I mean, just, and, that, I mean and that's what, and that's what people you know, would I mean, the blue. That's what the country is hearing when you listen to Bloomberg. And you guys didn't even exactly. know it existed. So I'm, I'm glad it works, in, 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 but it's not going to work in America. I mean, why do you think his pollsters told him, don't waste your time going to fucking Iowa? Yeah. yeah. Because Iowa looks a lot like parts of Ohio and parts of Wisconsin. Yeah, parts but it isn't, it, it isn't as though, it, it, Phil, it isn't as though Trump is a man of the people. I was going to say, yeah, he's not, I mean, he's not. Now, what's he the difference a between classic hand-tossed and New York crust? Yeah, uh, listen, uh, uh, um, <laughs> old, uh, Bloomberg to break this has up. many <laughs> of these uh, state type of statements. This farm thing is only one of many that I've heard. Now, yeah. Uh, yeah, and are you upset that the, uh, that, that the farmers are being put down? Come on, Phil, you don't give a sh- crap about farmers. It's, you I, don't I, care I, about farmers in the least. You're just picking on something to pick a on something. A limousine liberal, elitist prick. <laughs> I'm glad that he just wasted a half a billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Bad. Now, I You're glad he wasted it? He didn't waste it, Phil. <laughs> Phil, he didn't waste it. He he presented to America a group of ideas that I think most of the people here are, who are left-leaning probably, hey, uh, if we, let me finish, Phil, probably agree with. You know, and so we're happy that that message is getting out there, and that he has the money to put that message out there. It's a combed message. You know, today uh, Amy Manuel uh, uh, put up uh, some Bloomberg thing. Well, she's and, she's an idiot. Yeah, and and said that you know uh, Bloomberg could beat up Trump or something to that effect. Oh, and I commented and I said only if he uses a box. And <laughs> yeah, he's kind of you know. uh, well, I love but, how, uh, how uh, uh, Ocasio Cortez was going after Amazon uh, for their, uh, you know, how how uh, bad their packaging was for the environment with all that plastic. And I'm going, I get Amazon packages all the time, and they always come in cardboard. Oh, it's the plastic little air things that. Oh, keep- the pop- no, the no, the no. There's like- never that in there. I've never gotten it with that in there. What I usually get, if it's plastic, is the product that I'm buying is encased in plastic, which they have nothing to do with. Well, yeah, you know, you know those little air pillows that they uh, that they'll pack a box in. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think they use that that much at. Uh, yeah, they do. At, I, do I they? get a lot of it. Yeah. yeah, but Bezos just put ten billion dollars for climate change work. Yeah. So you know. I, 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 I felt, you know, obviously. I, I mean, I, I guess, like, for Ocasio Cortez, even if that was absolutely 100% true, like, let's say we all agree we're not going to debate it. Mm-hmm. it. If that's the kind of shit the Democratic Party plans to spend their time talking about for the next six months, then Trump will get reelected, and that's yeah, why he got elected in the first place. Thank it's you. because even if that's 100% true, I'm just telling you, in the area of the country where I live in, no one wants to hear that shit. I mean, it's not going to work. That's not going to get anyone to vote for you that wasn't already going to vote for you anyway. Are these because people waiting? Because all the week, Trump 
I'm just saying, for all we give Trump his hell about saying I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and all these people would still vote for me, there are just as many people who would vote for uh, the Democratic nominee under the same exact circumstances. So, it, yeah. it, it's let, about let, me, let me ask you this, though. Let team. me ask you this, uh, uh, Josh. Uh, when it comes to those people in the Midwest, well, who is the best candidate? To appeal to them, it certainly isn't Bernie because he's like from he's, no, he's it, from the exactly. he, he's from, it's it's the kind of person that I've told you for a long time. Some sort of moderate voice. Well, who would that with be? Some experience. She who has right. some some a decent labor relations background. Someone like Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bernie is not going to turn them on to that. The, I mean. They tried to get Sherrod Brown, the senator from Ohio, to run for president for those exact reasons. You want to know what there I think the, the problem? Like to see Sherrod Brown on the ticket as the, the vice The problem president. is if I had to if I had to tell the Democratic Party to do anything, is mm -hmm. next time the presidential election comes around, do not do all these debates. Just don't do them, yeah. because what you're doing is you're simply feeding material. Yep. To the Republicans yep. that they can use, and you're yep. in the process spending your entire year and a half or more denigrating all the other people and fighting with each other. Yeah, you know how, yeah, both yeah, parties do that, end. but I, I agree. Yeah. When do the primaries end? When will we know who the Democratic candidate is? Uh, I mean, the, the last convention. primary is in like One's July convention. or. Is the convention, August. isn't it? Right before the convention, but you see, that's ridiculous because they're not gonna they're not gonna have somebody, and then they go against Trump September October. That's it. Yeah, well, but see, here's the point. Here's the point. Mm -hmm. Why why spend all this time? Then because they go to they have this debate and they start yelling at each other and they start making each other look bad. Okay, well, great. You've just made the case for Trump. You know, Sorry. you've just given him sound bites. Like. You've just given him sound like bites that can be used in his ads against you. Yeah. And and what do these debates do for you? They don't do anything. And then, of course, you want to get your 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 poll numbers up, and you want to get your uh, tweets, uh, more tweets for you, and this and that and all. Forget it. Just make your case to the American public, and don't denigrate each other. Don't fight amongst yourselves. It's just not a winning strategy. But they're going to denigrate themselves in advertising. That you know, that's the system. It, so it's a bad plan. What do you th I think? That what do you have it earlier? The convention yeah, well, okay. should be earlier so that they well, know. Who uh, the we don't. We shouldn't have. We shouldn't have primaries at all. But that's another story altogether. Uh, quickly, Rob, what do you think? You talking to me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I've been agreeing with you. I I, I, uh, oh, I, just I don't like see. the fact that uh, that they rip each other apart. Mm -hmm. I uh, you know I think that's a horrible thing. Even if they don't use it in advertising, it is it's pointing at the weakness in everybody that you're trying to put up to be the president of the United States. Right, and you're trying and to and, and, and you're trying to tear them down rather yeah. than build yourself up. Right, Plus you know one party. Yeah. Yeah. Both, both the candidate parties. Go. Follow that. I'll let that, I'll let Phil awesome. give us the last word on this subject. Oh, hey Rob, are you sick? You have a virus? No, why? Oh, uh, your voice, your horse. Yeah, I I've been, I I did a lot of talking today. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, uh, you know, this is this is the American way. You know, uh, the, only the strong survive. Well, but I, I don't want uh, a a advertising campaign to tell me who somebody is because you're getting the message that they want you to hear, not the messages to who they really are. And that's what uh, Bloomberg is doing. And, you're and, you're being conned by a public a publicity stunt. Or publicity, yeah. and, and and please let's go back to having the League of Women Voters run debates, okay? And, 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 get, yeah. and get away from networks doing it. Well, yeah. hey, yeah. hey, everybody, it's been great having you here. Jeff hasn't said a single word all night. I don't That's think, right. Jeff. <laughs> Uh, I didn't say anything wrong. Uh, I won't be here on uh, on uh, Tuesday, and maybe not Wednesday, maybe not Thursday. It depends on how I feel, but I won't be here Tuesday. That's for damn sure. I'm well, going to be, well. yeah, well. and I think I think it's all going to be okay. I'm just, you know, I don't like the idea of being put under and some guy sticking stuff up my ass and you know, <laughs> doing things like that. But what the hell, you know, they pay hey, they pay good money for that uptown. 
Uh, anyway. We'll report back on the grade she gets next week. Yeah. Okay. Please do that. Uh, uh, Josh, thank you so much. And thank I, you so much. That says that the Beatles are mainstream and some of their music could be played in a progressive station. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you, Josh. Thank you, um, uh, Bree. Uh, thank you uh, to Tony. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Phil. And thank you, Jeff, who has not said a word at all tonight. But if you all wave a big wave goodbye, uh, I will wave back at you. Okay? Bye-bye. Okay? There we go. You notice how I... When I, when I put my hand up like that, look. Huh. It isn't supposed to do that, but it does that. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let me see here. Let me uh, let me hang up on all these fine people, and tell you that the next guy up is uh, is Jack Bishop, and he's here with the intersection. He'll be here and want your calls as well. Look, why does my hand do that when I? Well, not, not with that hand. It's just that hand does it. Oh, I see. Because it's oh, I see. I get it. All right. Well, anyway, I'll uh, I'll see you all probably the earliest Wednesday. Okay. Uh, in the meantime. Have a good uh, night, everybody, and I'll see you uh, next time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Wish me luck. <laughs>